how you guys and welcome back to my channel i'm your favorite girl diva and if you are new to my channel you're most definitely welcome in today's video we are reviewing season 14 episode 5 she by herself which they was very much shady <laughs> they was producers are so shady the editors whoever did this they very much shady for this title but i'm in the car because the inside of my house is very loud and i don't have the time i really don't have the time and i do owe y'all this video because i didn't get as you see, I have surgery, or I had surgery, so I wasn't able to get my videos out like I wanted to last week or the week before. I've been out for two weeks. So, without further ado, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing helps me out a lot. I'm very close to a thousand, so please get me there. <sighs> Let's get into this episode. So, we start the episode off continuing from the dinner, and Drew actually apologizes to Sheree for one putting her hand in her face because she talks like that, which we're going to let that slide. They get past that. And Kenya, her phone is blinging, 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 blinging. Like her hotline is going off. She gets up from the table and Kenya, not Kenya, Marlo follows her, which actually shocked me because Kenya is more close with what candy so why did candy not get up and walk out with her and go check on her why was marlo that's what in my head i'm thinking why is marlo following behind kenya but they're aquarius is so maybe they aquarius sisters that's gonna stick together for now and kenya and mark is having issues or i'm gonna say mark is having an issue with kenya mark ain't seen his child in three months allegedly that's what kenya said i believe it Kenya and mark are having issues regarding brooklyn so, since Mark has not seen or come to Atlanta to see Brooklyn in about three months, Kenya knew she was going to New York. She set up something for Mark to have Brooklyn. And at the dinner, he texts her talking about something. He got to go to work. Something came up. Can you come get her? And I would have been like, um, no, you need to not go the way you think you finna be going because we planned this out. You knew you was going to have your child. Why is you sitting there telling me to come and get her? Like I have plans and I feel like he know that she got plans and he, she, either he trying to ruin them or he just don't care. He had her for like, I don't know if Mark got kids. I feel like he do, but obviously if he do, they older. He didn't probably expect it would it to be what it was going to be when he was watching Brooklyn. Brooklyn, sorry for the missteps. And he was tired of her. And he was ready for Kenya to come get her, her baby. I ain't going to say they baby. Her baby. Because he, clearly he don't even be worried about her. So. <sighs> Gotta keep that throat moist. Marlo, like I said, follows behind Kenya. Asks her what's going on. And, girl, not a bug finna bite me. Let me let this window up. Because I don't got the time. Candy finally comes out while Marlo and Kenya is talking. And Kenya, Marlo, I'm sorry. Marlo is basically being a very good friend. Telling her, don't let her ruin your night. If you got to send somebody to go get your baby, send somebody. Tell him, no problem, i get the baby. But the thing is, I know this was planned out because... I feel like a month or two months before that they, they knew they was going to New York. They had to plan it out. Candy didn't just up in two days before because in the first episode, first, second episode, this is the fifth, we knew that Candy had a play going on. We knew this. So that's why I know, like Kenya said, it was planned out. Like that just doesn't make sense. So she, they all go back to the table and they wrap the night up. And it moves on to the next day, which is the day of the play. So Candy gets up early. Todd said he going to the gym. And Candy, like, who is you going to the gym with? Like, what kind of issues y'all trying to pretend like y'all got? Like, it's giving, mm, 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 mm. Just stop. Before y'all have some issues for real. So Candy meets up with some execs for the play, which is doing really good. They say most of her ticket sales is coming from either Texas or Atlanta. It's pretty much a tie. But the thing that got me is when, when the two men that was talking to her, they were saying how this little play, I say this little play, what you mean? Like to me, that was very shady. Like, what do you mean this little play is helping bring New York broadway back it's helping bring people into our city so if it's doing all that why is you calling it this little play 
I need to chill because I ain't supposed to be straining my voice. That's what really got me. Now we pan over to Sonya and Kenya who are walking the streets of New York. And she pretty much explaining the situation with her and Mark. And why is they not divorced yet? Why is they not divorced yet? Like, what's the tea? What's the problem? What's the hola? Because clearly Kenya is ready. She done signed the papers. The b Mark ain't signed yet. What's going on? Because you don't need no money from her. And you don't... The house she done had before y'all was together because she was building it when she was with Crazy Dude. They tried to bust her windows out. He did bust her windows out. So we ain't even gonna worry about that. You ain't getting no money from her. Sign the papers. Divorce her. Leave her alone. So, Sonya also gets into explaining how I need a chip. Yes, I put some in my roll pocket. Sonya explains how she really want to have a, not confront Drew, but I'm going to say have a heart to heart. She want to have a heart to heart with Drew because in episode four, three, two, a little bit of one, Drew has been getting caught in lies lying for no reason and being messy by pretty much contributing or not firing her assistant who allegedly called her husband gay and also was talking about Sheree how Sheree don't pay she bought Sheree don't pay and whether she do or not that's none of your business you are somebody's assistant do you understand me? You are somebody's assistant and you are working with relatively famous people. You should not be talking about none of them. I'm surprised they didn't make you sign an NDA, but again, it's Atlanta and I ain't finna say nothing about that. It just doesn't make sense to me. We get to Sheree, who's sitting on her hotel bed. She just woke up and she calls Candy and she goes, what you up to? And Candy goes, girl, I've been up. I've been up since the crack of dawn. And she had meetings and all this stuff to take care of. She's a businesswoman, you know, unlike Sheree, who keeps talking about Sheba Sheree, but we still have yet to see. We've seen what some merch, maybe, but we have not seen no Sheba Sheree. The only thing that Sheree has done is show Chateau. Like, that's pretty much it. So, Sheree and Candy is FaceTiming. And Candy asks, where's Tyrone? And Sheree says that Tyrone is not coming, but she's going to meet up with him in Philly. And to me, every time they ask, where's Tyrone, where's Tyrone? She always has an excuse for Tyrone as to why he's not showing up, as to why he's not there or why he's not coming or why he can't make it this time. Because she originally said that he was coming. Now he can't come because... He's too afraid to that it's cutting it too close. But he, you said he could travel up to 100 miles. From Philly to where they was in New York was about 95.2 miles. But he didn't want to push it. But you said he already got the okay from his parole officer. So what's the T? Like, it, you see how that goes? It doesn't really make sense. Like, it really doesn't make sense. All of a sudden, he can't make it. Ogre. So it's the night of the play. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to set this phone up so where I don't have to hold it, but at the same time it won't fall. Does that even look better? I feel like it looks better when I hold it. So it's the night of the party and they start the night off with dinner. These dinners have been looking bomb and I ain't been able to eat about nothing. So I've been living through watching other people eat. <laughs> Because of my throat issues, everything they've done, ate, done, ugh, I've been salivating like, ugh. can I get some? I don't even drink, but the drinks look good, except for candy. You know, she always drinking water. So, I don't know what done traumatized her, Portia, but can, candy do not drink. She is not drinking with y'all. I feel like she'll drink with Todd, maybe, probably. But she's not drinking with these girls, and she's not drinking on camera. She said, I, listen, I don't know what traumatized her, Phaedra, but she's not drinking with you hoes. So, Kenya poses the question, who's the most famous person that has ever hit on you? Candy says, Jarell Levert, somebody I don't know. Uh, Marlo says, Gene Simmons, somebody I don't know. The man, he looked like, <sighs> But he's 70-something years old, so that's up her alley. But 
Marlo be kind of lying too, so I really don't know when she, or she play too much. You really don't know if she telling the truth or when she for serious. Hmm. I don't think Sonya said nobody. I don't think Sheree said anybody. Drew said, Kenya said Prince, which I kind of really don't believe. Like, Prince girl, really girl. I feel like she would have been said something about her. Okay, she didn't say date. I'm going to say hit on. So maybe it's true. She didn't say date. Drew said Le LeBron James. And if you've been on Instagram, you know that LeBron typed out a whole message allegedly because of what Drew said on this episode. Now, Sonya called it out. She said, now, wasn't LeBron James with his high school sweetheart since high school, his wife since high school? So when did he have or find or make the time to be with you? Drew talking about something. He was flying her, flying her out to his games and Every game he was winning because he was listening to her music before the game. And she just sound like she be lying. Like, we can't believe nothing she say. So, I would take it with all the grains of salt. And it was the fact that they were so comfortable saying stuff like that with their husband sitting right there. That's probably why Sonya didn't say nothing. Because she gives me the vibe that she respect her husband to the utmost. So, and vice versa. So, they get back. I don't know who asked the question. But they get back into where is Tyrone. And Sheree says, well, he can't make it, but I'm going to go see him tomorrow in Philly. Okay, girl. Okay. So they all leave dinner and everybody goes to get ready for the show that's going on tonight. Candy's play, Thoughts of a Colored Man. And they're all on FaceTime with Candy. Candy is explaining to everybody, put your vibrator in your panties and pretty much how to do it, how it's going to work, the remote, da, da, da. They pile onto the bus. Kenya not wearing hers because she approved. Marlo not wearing hers because she probably about don't feel like it. Proves. But that's the thing. Two Aquariuses. They both didn't want to do it. I think one is a January, one is a February. Either that or they both February. But I'm not sure. I'm an Aquarius. A January one. <sighs> Girl, I... Oh, I thought it was a book. <laughs> I would have had that thing in my panties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. I would have had that thing in my panties because I'm nosy for one. And I just want to, I just want, I don't want to be left out unless I want to be left out. I want to be in the mix. So, after the, first of all, they had to walk about seven minutes. I don't know what seven New York minutes is or seven, like how long did it take them to get there actually? I would have pulled a Marlo. I'm not finna walk seven minutes in these high seven inch stiletto pumps in the streets of New York, like I'm not doing it, it's not happening, no ma'am, no ham, no turkey, I'm sorry. So, Milo finds her a scooter, uh, not a scooter, a bike, let alone, not even a scooter, a bike, and she bikes it to the play while everybody walks. So, they all come out of the play, and I'm very glad nobody talked trash about the play. Not that they should have anyway, because they're supposed to be uplifting each other, but they don't do that all the time. So everybody, especially Ross, Ross and everybody else has such great things to say about the play. And that made me so happy. They all took something from it. And it was just a good thing to hear and see. Like, it, it made me happy. Candy's play had good reviews and everybody had a good time for the most part. So... After the play, they have a pajama jam, a.k.a. a slumber party. And when Candy said they having a pajama jam, my teeth look good. It made me think about that one time they all had a slumber party. And the Miz was fighting, the girls was fighting, everybody was fighting all up and through. Y'all, y'all will not believe. <laughs> y'all will not believe. It is now 10 o'clock. And I was locked out of my car. I had to call the freaking locksmith. I went inside for... It don't matter. I'm in the car now. So we about to finish this review. And hopefully this is the spot that I left off at. Let me look and see my notes. Okay, yeah. After the play, they have a slumber party. Kenya and Marlo. Let me get my light. Kenya and Marlo and Sheree are the first ones there. Well, Kenya and Sheree is the first ones there. Marlo moseys in. Let me, see, now I'm so discombobulated now. Let me put my keys in my pocket. Because, 
I left the phone, both of them in the car, juice in the car, keys in the car, sitting on the seat. Ugh, the worst. And they're sitting there chatting it up about Drew, about her little busted weight loss program, dropping it with Drew. And Marlo lets out a burp, not even a burp, a belch. And somebody, as for somebody who's caught up or used to be so high strung on etiquette, why would you let out a belch that sound like it came from a 37, 35, 34, 32, 30 year old fat head, bald head, big bellied man, white man that live in his mama's basement and play games all day? It sounded like. I was with Kenya. I would have got up and moved and looked at you like, you're disgusting. And then Sheree goes, do you do that around your boyfriend? Marlo say, I ain't got no boyfriend. I say, carry on. But do that on your own time. Don't do that in the presence of me. Because that's disgusting. That's like somebody... Don't fart next to me. Don't belch next to me. I don't want to smell your inner bodily fluids. I don't want it. I don't need it. Don't do that, Neri. So... Who else comes in? Candy, Drew comes in, and they all sitting around the table. Ross, Ralph, and Todd come in, and Kenya apologizes to Ralph for how they how she talked to him the other night. She she said she was projecting, which she probably was, but he did need to hear what she had to say because he's a mess. Um, Sonya tries to speak to Drew about her messy behavior and how sometimes she doesn't really know how to back Drew up. She wants to call Drew her friend, even though they just met, probably have hung out before the season, maybe two times tops. Um, but she really wants to call Drew a friend, but she doesn't really know how to work around or move around her because she not she not for some of the or most of the messy things that Drew be doing. And she doesn't know how to back her up when she's in the wrong. So Drew's like, I don't, I don't, what, what, what do you mean? Basically, Drew gets offended and goes, you remember I picked you up when you got in the car crash? What that got to do with what I'm telling you right now? Drew goes, why are you bringing this up right now? Can y'all hear the outside? Lost door again. That's what got me in trouble the first time. I got scared and I shut the door and locked it. I forgot. So... She was like, why are you bringing this up right now? And Sonya goes, well, because Kenya literally just asked, which Kenya did, because after she apologized to Ross or Ralph, she was like, does anybody have anything else that they want to say and, like, clear the air before we, like, all go home? So Sonya was like, all right, bet. Let me take the opportunity to say, which is why, Drew, she's bringing this up right now. Like, Drew goes, but you, I picked you up when you was in a car accident okay did you do that for the camera or do did, did you do that because you actually are a good person and you did it out of kindness of your heart and you wanted to because i could have very much called triple a just like i did tonight come in 15 minutes so what's tea sonya lets it go because drew seems to never get anything through to her head and they kiki for the rest of the night marlo brings up the fact that her she gonna lie and say kenya and <laughs> that kenya tried to go on her website so they could all join drop it with drew and she goes oh my gosh for real girl we playing with you we actually zoning on you we cracking jokes on you we not kikiing with you we're picking on you it was like drew wasn't catching on and marlo was like yeah your website don't work and she was like, oh, um, yeah, it crashes. It crashed. Yeah, it crashed. Now that I think about it. Now that you think about it, it crashed. Like, it just, she just lies. Like, bro, why are you lying? And then they bring up the fact that you literally just got a BBL, tummy tuck, titty lift, and now you want to work out? Is this for something that... How are you dropping in with Drew? The doctor dropped your pounds. So what's tea? Moving on, it's the next day, everybody's going home, and Sheree is going to Philly. So, Sheree drives, or she's in the back of the car, she has a driver. She rides almost two hours, 
What's 90 minutes? Whatever. She rides almost two hours from where she was in New York to Philadelphia to meet up with Tyrone. And while she's in the car, she calls her daughter and goes, I'm finna go meet up with Tyrone. And her, I feel like her daughter really not feeling it. Her daughter is really not feeling it, to be honest. By the energy that she was giving off, it was just like, mm, for real? Okay. Tell him I said, hey. Like, she is very much, she's trying to be a supportive daughter or supportive friend even though she is her daughter she's trying to support her mama because i feel like her her daughter is not for her dating a man straight out of prison whether he was in prison she probably wasn't for it then but she definitely not for it now now that he's out of prison and on parole and sheree done said he done messed up 50 lump times but we gonna get into that later we're gonna get into that later so sheree pulls up to the restaurant my thing is, 20 minutes go by. I'm not even waiting for you 20 minutes. Let alone, I'm not waiting for you 10. Let alone an hour and 45 minutes. I'm not waiting. Like, I'm going to call you maybe two times and see where you at. See what, what's your ETA. After that, I'm gone. And I hope you call me so I can let you know I'm gone. But I'm going to answer when I get at home. And I'm, my face washed off and I'm in the bed watching TV. I'm going to let you call me. Like, don't have me sitting waiting nowhere. And she talking about something. He usually on time, so I don't know what's going on. He's almost always on time. Like, I cannot stand waiting for somebody. I can't stand when somebody is late. I can't stand when we make plans. And if you cannot make it, you do not call me to let me know. Put me up on game. Why you got me sitting out here looking very much so slow? In this mink coat near to the fire. So you know it's cold out this dough. So they show it. Like 20 minutes go by. Sheree orders like two to three drinks. She orders two. It looked like lemon drops. So I'm going to call it lemon drops. Two lemon drops and one hot tea. And she calls Tyrone. It goes to like either a voicemail or it sounds like a busy tone. But I was like, I ain't never heard that before. Because it looked like she was FaceTiming him. And then I noticed she had an Android. <laughs> I was like, is that the sound that they made? Because I was like, I ain't never heard that before. I was like, she, they got to have put that, town, that tone in there. And then it showed she was calling from an Android is what it looked like. So I was like, okay. So Sheree calls her daughter and asks, what does it mean when you call somebody and it just goes like, it rings a little bit and it goes straight to voicemail. So her daughter said, I think he blocked you. And she goes, what? Her daughter says, the grandma's calling her. She hangs up. The producer comes in and says that Tyrone is not going to be coming, shucker, because there's an issue with his parole violation. She said, how is it a parole violation? She, it seemed like she was getting mad with the producer when in all reality, you need to be getting mad at Tyrone. But I understand she's probably already aggravated because she had to wait, 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 wait. You know how that man at the crosswalk be? Wait 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 sir i'm waiting so i don't know like i don't know what the heck was going on so kenya call sheree calls kenya and i really appreciate kenya i appreciate marlo how, for how she was being a friend to kenya in the beginning of the episode i also appreciate how because we know how they both can be but one thing about us as aquarians we can be a good friend like well i'm gonna speak for me I know I'm a good friend, hands down. I'm with you when you're right. And if we in public, I'm with you when you're wrong. When we go home, I'll let you know about your wrongdoings. I'm going to put you straight. Like, I ain't never going to... You feel me? So, Sheree calls Kenya and lets her know, like, I'm still stuck on the fact that you had me waiting an hour and about 32 minutes sitting at this restaurant looking like Boo Boo the Fool. Sitting here by myself with production watching me watch these drinks come watch these appetizers come sitting here checking my phone sitting here alone waiting on tyrone like i was glad kenya was there for sheree and sheree was like i don't want to cry blah, 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 blah. and she started crying i could really f tell that she was actually hurt because sheree always getting shit on by these niggas like what that man name is that her husband her ex-husband that used to be really mean to her and talk down to her on camera big what was his name paul something he was big football ex-football player 
I just like to see people be good, like genuinely good friends to their friends. Kenya was like, do you need me to help you get a flight? Do you need me to like, da, 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 da. Like, yes, good friend. Be a good friend. Like be good people and don't do it because the cameras is on. Do it because you actually want to be there for that person. Because I be treating people how I would want them to treat me. Like I take my friendship serious. I care about my friends sometimes more than I care about my family. Because family be having me the a lot of the time. I don't play. So Kenya tries to like uplift Sheree. Obviously, she's crying. She's emotional. And it is emotional. Like, why did you stand me up? And she was like, Kenya was saying how this is like one time. This is one strike. And Sheree in the midst of her tears said, no, this is about to strike 50. Okay, sis, cut him off. If you know that, like, that's why I'm saying she been making excuses for him. And it was like overkill like you've been making excuses for him and now we see you talking about this is like the 50th mess up cut him off find you somebody else like there's you live in atlanta if the fish ain't gay go get a whale go get a dolphin go get an antelope go get something other than tyrone who lives 50 11 miles away in philadelphia you're in atlanta there's plenty of eligible bachelors find somebody that ain't got no kids no baby mama you can do that it's very much easy make sure they ain't married because we close our legs to them so no need so yeah that's pretty much the episode i was gonna say it wasn't really giving much but it was kind of giving something it was it's better than the first episode of the real housewives of dubai which I still have not finished episode one and I need to get on episode two, but episode one, it was just like, it's very hard for me to watch. To me, it's kind of boring, but I'm going to get past that and I'm going to try to definitely make a review for episode two, which I think is either coming out tonight or tomorrow night. So that is episode five of season 14 of Real Housewives of Atlanta. She by herself. Like, I can't, I can, but I can't believe that they actually named this as a play off of her clothing line or whatever she want to call it, She by Sheree. This episode was called She by Herself, and she was very much sitting there by herself. That's em embarrassing. Like, what? But thank you so much for watching this video, you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you, especially if you stayed to the end. Talk to me in the comments down below and let me know how you felt about this episode. Like, what would you have done if you were Sheree? Would you even be dating a man from jail, let alone prison? Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Hopefully, the next video will be Basketball Wives. Hopefully. Um, I gotta... Girl, that's my neighbor. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. Bye.